What's up, Yvonne's? I'm back. Happy 2018. It's been a heck of the last few months. I, uh, I accidentally took the month of January off. I'm very sorry. I, I didn't intend to do that, but I'm back and ready to uh, bring you some more new episodes. If you're just joining us, if you just found this channel, welcome. Uh, please take a moment to hit subscribe somewhere down at the bottom. My name is Amanda. I'm a sommelier here in Napa Valley at a restaurant called Press Restaurant. So I work with wine day in, day out in one of the best winemaking regions in the world. So I decided that because there are so many new faces, new subscribers, I figured I would bring it back to basics today. I thought it was a really good opportunity for me to just kind of start the year fresh and talk about the number one most asked question I get all the time, which is how do I learn about wine and where do I start? So these are the five things I think you can do right now to really bring it back to basics and get started learning about wine. If you already know a little bit about wine, this is a really good refresher course for you. Um, I always like to bring it back to basics for myself, really focus on the fundamentals because everything else is just an extension of this. If you really have these five things down and ready to go, you can kind of do anything from there. So uh, this is back to basics, some vivant style. And my first, first thing that I want you to do is stop buying the same wine. I know it sounds really stupid, really simple, um, but I hear it all the time when people say, I wanna get into wine, I wanna learn about wine, uh, what do I do? And I, I will often ask them, what are you buying right now? What, do you, what are you drinking right now? What are you enjoying right now? And a lot of times people say, I just really love this Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. That's great, I, I'm, really, I'm really happy that you found your thing. I just keep going back to it. But if you really wanna learn about wine, you have to stop buying the same bottle. Oh. So next time you go into the wine shop, try a totally different bridal, go to a different section, go somewhere that you didn't even think that you would go before. So if you typically drink red wine, try white wine. If you typically drink white wine, try red wine. If you would never drink a Riesling, buy a Riesling. Another great way to do this, and I'm really gonna be keeping a really close eye on this, especially this year, is wine clubs. I think as we are moving into a world where trust agents are everything, we're buying everything online, wine clubs are gonna be really, really big moving forward, and I personally am really enjoying them. So. Uh, ones that I've enjoyed so far, the Acme Wine Club, which I've talked about before, the girls down the street at Acme Fine Wines, they curate all different types of wine clubs from small producers here in the valley to more expensive, more lavish bottles that maybe are slightly under the radar. I've also really been enjoying Viticole. Brian McClintock from the movie Psalm, he started a wine club where he curates different bottles that he selects from around the world. It's a one month shipping, it's about a hundred bucks plus shipping. I'm really, really excited about what he's doing. And I think as we start moving into this area where there's just so much to choose from, wine clubs are gonna be really critical for helping us to take a little bit of that legwork out of the process. I'll be doing future episodes on what wine clubs are working. I've got uh, the Gary V Wine Club on order. I'm curious to see how that is. And if there's any wine clubs that you found so far that you really like, please be sure to let me know in the comments. So that's number one, stop buying the same thing. Number two, you have to analyze the wine and you have to analyze it over several days. And the one thing that I think you can get that's really inexpensive that will help you to do that and help to keep the wine intact are these recours. When I first discovered them, I was really skeptical and then I tried it out. I, uh, I put it in a wine and after three and a half, four weeks, the wine was still perfectly intact. This thing peels off and it, it absorbs all of the oxygen, not only from on top of the bottle, but from inside the actual wine itself. So it keeps it from oxidizing. I was really impressed with it. It's really inexpensive. It's a lot easier than some of the pumps that I've seen. It's easier than getting a tank of argon gas, which is what restaurants typically use. Um, this is a really simple, easy way to keep a wine intact. Make sure that you're analyzing these wines over a few days. Don't buy a bottle and down it in one night. Um, make sure that you are keeping a few glasses because your palate changes dramatically from day to day. Maybe dramatically is a little bit 
overdoing it. But your palate does change depending on what you had for breakfast, how much sugar you had, how much acid you had, what's going on in your day. It really does affect how the wine will taste. And I think it's important to analyze a wine over several different days to really understand yourself, understand your palate, understand how other factors can affect a wine. The third thing I really, really believe in is get yourself a good glass. To me, this is just like, it's just having the right materials for glass. I don't like stemless glassware. I don't love big bulky glassware. I love my Zalto. If that's not your thing, if you're afraid you're gonna break it, it's totally fine. Um, I think it's Schatz's Wiesel makes a break proof glass, um, but make sure when you're tasting wine, you're tasting it out of, out of a decent glass. It will really affect the wine, and I also think it makes for a more pleasurable experience. Number four, this is a tough one, guys, I know, uh, but you have to take notes. So as you are tasting this wine over the course of a few different days, grab yourself a notebook and take notes. I really like this moleskin. It's broken up into red, white, rosé, fortified, sweet, and then within the actual area, it's got places to write the wine, the grapes, the producer, nose, taste, etc., etc. Uh, and I, I really like this book a lot. I use it all the time. Um, and I also really like having a good pen. That's not really a, I wouldn't like call it like a tip, but um, I find that when I'm tasting wine, my inclination to want to take notes really diminishes as I get further than into the process. Like if I have six different wines that I'm trying, like wine number six is like a couple of scribbles and like a thumbs up. I find that having a pen that I like writing with that's easy to write with really helps me to stay motivated to keep taking notes, um, as silly as that sounds. As you are taking notes and going through the process of really sitting down to analyze the wine, make sure you're also spitting. I know that's not always the most fun thing to do and people are not always super into spitting wine, but that is something that we do as wine professionals. It's important, it helps me to analyze the wine faster, easier, and it helps me to just be a little bit more succinct if I'm not getting drunk throughout the process of tasting wine, which I understand is like the fun part for a lot of people, I, I get that. Um, but if, if we are to start learning about wine and start doing it the right way, uh, spitting is definitely something that you should be doing. And this is just what I use to spit in. So that is number four. Number five is... Today we're actually gonna be using the um, Vermeil wine because the Eagles in the Super Bowl how exciting. I guess if you're watching this now, it's the Super Bowl's either going on or it's already happened. Hopefully the Eagles won. I'm a huge Eagles fan. I'm born and raised outside of Philadelphia. This is Vermeil Wines. If you're not familiar with Dick Vermeil, uh, Dick Vermeil's a legendary football coach. He coached the Eagles back in the 70s and 80s. Took them to a Super Bowl in 1980. He was a legend around our house. My grandfather talked about him constantly. Um, so I already knew Dick Vermeil when I got out here to California, but Dick Vermeil is actually born and raised in Calistoga. Had an equal passion for wine as he did for football and started Vermeil Wines. I was really excited to try this, especially because Thomas Rivers Brown signed on as their uh, consulting winemaker. And Thomas Brown is fairly famous winemaker in Napa Valley. He was responsible for a lot of 100 point wines like Schrader. He also makes a wine called River Rain that I really like. We're gonna be focusing on three to four primary things when you're tasting wine, because I think beyond that, that's that's really all you need. You just need these like three to four things. Um, everything else is just sort of superfluous. You don't need to really analyze the color. I don't need to look at the legs. It's not important. All I really want you to focus on are these three things. The first thing I'm looking for is fruit. The second thing I'm looking for is earth and other organic elements. And then the third thing I'm looking for is spices. Now, as a whole, I'm looking at all of those three things and I'm looking for the quality and intensity of those three things. So is that fruit baked? Is it cooked? Is it compote? Is it ripe? Is it underripe? Is it put into like a jam? Is it baked into a pie? Um, that's the quality of the fruit that I'm looking for. When you're dealing with a wine from Napa Valley, a red wine from Napa Valley, a warmer region, you're gonna tend to have fruits that are a little bit more on the ripe side. Uh, the second thing is gonna be earth, things like forest floor, things like mushrooms, overturned earth, um, a little bit of a dustiness. Those are gonna be the earth things that you're looking for. And then in the spice box, um, literally looking for things like spices that you would like open up in your cabinet at home and pull out. So everything from black pepper to cumin to coriander, vanilla, cardamom, cinnamon, literally as if you were opening up your cabinet and you were looking down the wall of all your different spices, 
of those spices what's in that glass so those are the three things that you're looking for the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna smell the wine don't even swirl it just stick your nose in the glass don't give it oxygen immediately. I wanna know what that wine smells like immediately out of bottle because the second you start aerating a wine, you're gonna lose some things. So I'm gonna pick this up, give it a nice smell. I'm gonna write down my initial thoughts on the wine and then I'm gonna swirl it and go back to it. So give it a nice swirl. Not too much, you don't need to do this. You don't need to go crazy, you don't need to shake it up. Just a little tilt of the wrist. And then I go back in. I try to move my nose kind of side to side, try to get a couple different things in the glass. As I'm looking for fruit in the wine, you can really boil it down to three types of fruit. If you don't want to get too specific, you can boil it down to red fruit, black fruit, blue fruit. Red fruit being like cherries and strawberries, black fruit being obviously blackberries, something more like cassis and then blue fruit being blueberries and things like that. I'm gonna give you an overview of what this wine has in it right now. So on the nose, I'm getting a lot of red fruit, I'm getting a lot of black fruit. So a lot of raspberry, a lot of blackberry, and I'm getting it more on the ripe to compote side of things. So I would definitely make sure to write those things down in my notes. And then I'm also getting a lot of black pepper, something that is not unusual for a wine that has Zinfandel in it. Black pepper is something that you would typically find with Zinfandel, sort of a marker for uh, knowing that it might be Zinfandel in the glass if I were to blind taste this wine. Um, so as we move to the palate, you're gonna do the palate exactly the same way as you did the nose, but you're gonna do it in three sips. The first sip is gonna be the primer, you're gonna do the second sip and the third sip. You're just trying to coat the mouth with the wine uh, on your first sip. So I try to um, not even think about the, that first initial sip when I'm tasting. It's spitting. <clears throat> so even now, like my palate, I've had breakfast, I've had coffee, I've had water, probably had a few things since then. So I'm really just trying to get my palate set up and primed for the next layer. So think of it if you're if you're painting a room, it's your primer base. Um, it's not really what's going on with us. I'm gonna go in for the second sip. Paying attention to those three things again, fruit, earth, and spices. As I'm going through the palette, I'm getting a lot of what I was getting in the nose. Some more black fruit, I'm getting more red fruit, and I'm getting it more on the ripe side, not so much on the compote side of things. Uh, so the nose definitely felt a little bit riper than the palate does. Now, if you really want to go beyond the fundamentals of what we're talking about today, you can also begin to analyze the tannic structure and the acid. The tannin in the wine is going to be the thing that sort of dries your mouth out. Uh, and that's going to be coming from the grape skins and then it also could be coming from the wood that the wine is aged in. So I would say this is about a medium tannin level. Not surprising. Not, not a <clears throat> Not surprising because these grapes, um, two of them are sort of medium tannin grapes, the other two are higher tannin grapes, uh, so I'm getting about a medium tannin meaning I'm only getting a modest amount of dryness on my tongue and then around my mouth. Um, and then acid level, we've talked about this in a few other episodes before, but the acid level can be measured by how much you're salivating after each sip. So if you're only salivating from about here, you've got like probably low-ish acid from here, back here is gonna be medium acid. If you're salivating all the way up to your ears and it's so, so crazy, um, that's gonna be a higher acid wine. Something like this, I would expect it to be more low to medium acid, which is exactly what I'm getting. So that's really it. I would go down, I would write those, those two things down the nose and the palate, forget about the legs, forget about how the wine looks, forget about all of the other crazy things that people talk about. Just focus in on those three things when you're tasting the wine. Focus on the fruit, focus on the earth, and focus on the spice. If you really want to take it to the next level, start focusing on the tannin structure and the acid structure. Beyond that, everything is just extra. Typically what I focus on when I'm doing all of these episodes, when I'm doing the weekly wine picks, when I'm doing the $15 Friday, I'm really focusing on those three things. Uh, and I think that will really help you to just form a really nice, strong foundation on how to taste wine and what to do when you're sitting down and trying to learn about each different bottle you're going to taste. I know that was a little bit more like the scholastic educational front than I typically do. I really felt like it was important to bring it back to basics, really start to feel comfortable with tasting wine so that you can get to know me uh, and my tasting structure, how I operate, uh, so that can help you as well in the future. Anyway, um, lots of other things happening in the next coming weeks, next coming months. 
Uh, I'll be cheering on the Eagles today with my Vermeule wines and a few Sony Instagram posts. Um, also some tasty cakes to go alongside it because I am a Philly girl at heart. Um, go Eagles! If you like the Eagles and you like me and you like this video, you should hit like because why not? And then also, uh, if you like what I'm doing and you're not subscribed, please hit subscribe. Subscribing is hugely beneficial to me and to this channel and I would very, very much appreciate you doing that. So uh, if you do want to learn a little bit more, I did do a five part mini course uh, on how to order wine like pro at a restaurant, talking about a little less of this stuff and a little bit more of the what to do when you sit down and, and you're presented a wine list. So if you're interested in looking and checking that out, make sure you click the link below. Uh, I think it says free five part mini course. I think that's it, guys. I'm so excited to be back. I hope you're excited to be back as well. I will see you guys all later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.